Hey y'all, so I was actually not planning on filming today, but I had come outside to water the chickens because it's been really hot and they need water like twice a day. And so while I was walking around the garden to feed the baby chicks, I noticed a few things that I actually wanted to go ahead and share with y'all now. So let's go ahead and walk over there. So I went ahead and just got me a bowl here and I have a mason jar and some scissors because there are a few things I want to get out of here and take inside. I need to get like a cute little harvesting basket, <laughs> but we'll work on that. Now, a few days ago, we had a really, really bad storm come through and we had quite a few corns get knocked over. And so I wanted to show y'all, if you can see, we have one that got knocked over over there. Uh, there's one right over here that got knocked over. And then we had some that are just kind of leaning some did really great they didn't get affected at all but then we do have some that are kind of bent over we're not really sure we had the suggestion of maybe trying to like kind of uh, stake them up and see if they'll continue to grow but we'll just have to see and once we decide what we're going to do uh, we'll let y'all know over here in our squash patch i had a couple of things i wanted to show y'all Y'all know this big squash plant that's been doing so well. It does still have the squash growing on it. Hopefully, maybe within a week, we'll have some we can actually pull off. But what's new is that some of these plants down here are flowering. And we're getting some fruit on them, too. Let's see. Can you see that one right there? So that's really encouraging. Here in the sweet peppers, we have... A little baby bell pepper growing so far I think that might be <laughs> the only one we have so far let me go check so I was wrong we have more this plant right here has one and then I just saw another one right here that's even bigger I know the lighting's not great but we got one right here that leaf won't get out of the way <laughs> there it is and then I remember showing y'all this butternut squash plant. And what's new about it is that we actually have some butternut squashes that are starting to grow right there. Now these hot peppers are doing so good this year. I'm really proud of them. And we have a ton that we need to go ahead and harvest. Do y'all hear Moses? <laughs> He's rolling around in the grass, just moaning. Not too bad. We got all these peppers. I'm gonna have to make something spicy for dinner. <laughs> So we have a lot of these zinnia flowers that have actually started to bloom. I think when you were here last week that we only had like one or two, but we actually have quite a few now, like six or seven. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and um, clip some of those and put them up in the kitchen. The way it says to clip your zinnias is that, you know, the flowers right here, you wanna come all the way down to the first set of leaves and cut it right there. Oh, well, it's tough. There we go. Just like that. And then they said that it will, when you do this, it will help them keep producing more and more flowers instead of just going straight to seed. Let's 
Well, it looks like someone is ready to go inside. Are you ready to go inside? Are you hot? Well, come on, let's go. I need to get a smaller, <laughs> everything's so sweet. I need to get a smaller mason jar because one of those flowers was not as tall. Go ahead and get some water. And a little trick I learned, the trick I learned <laughs> this morning is that if you add a couple tablespoons of sugar to your water, this will actually help your zinnias last like two weeks in your house. But it also says that you need to change out your water about every two to three days. I had to change the jar it was in because I needed a smaller mouth, but I'm no florist, but this is beautiful. All grown in my own garden. Hey y'all, so it's been just a couple of days, but I am back in the kitchen and I thought to myself, by the time y'all watch this video, we're gonna be just a couple of days away from the 4th of July. So I thought, what better time than to make some patriotic cupcakes? These are very, very simple to make. All you need is a box cake mix and some sprinkles, but we're gonna put them together. They're gonna be really cute and really patriotic. So all we really have to have for this a fun patriotic cupcake is a box of white cake mix. I have a container of just vanilla frosting. I have some of these little fine red sprinkles. And then this is gonna be the star of the show. It has the fine blue sprinkles, but then it also has the red, white, and blue stars. I thought these would be perfect to go on top. And if you have time, go to the store and get some really cute like cupcake liners. But here at the house, I didn't have any, but I do have these um, silicone baking cups. So I'm gonna try these out and use this. I also need a piping bag for the uh, frosting and then I have this to um, put the frosting on the cupcake. I thought this would be really fun and really cute. For our cake mix, I'm going to start out by just making the cake batter just like you would like it says on the back of the box. Maybe try not to make a mess like me. <laughs> well, we might need a bigger bowl. But my cake mix says I need half a cup of oil one cup of water, and then three eggs. And these are our farm fresh eggs from our chickens. Now something you may have noticed is that my white cake mix is no longer white, it's more of a yellow. That's because in my eggs, I put in the whites and the yolk. If you want a perfectly white cake, you're gonna put in just the egg whites, not the yolk. Now for the fun part, we get to add in our sprinkles. I like to add mine into the batter, and then we'll add the other ones on top. This one doesn't have like a little sprinkle lid, so I like to pour out just a few in my hand. That way I don't over sprinkle them. Even though I don't know if that's a thing. Can you over sprinkle your cupcakes? I don't know if you can. Now we'll add in our blue sprinkles, and like I said, we're just gonna use the fine blue sprinkles for inside the cupcakes, and then we'll use these pretty star ones for on top. have a cookie scoop or like a cupcake scooper so I'm just going to use a spoon to pour these into the silicone molds 
That way I don't pour in too much. And there we go. So the box says to bake these at 350 degrees for about 14 to 19 minutes. Y'all, is it just me or does fresh cake right out of the oven smell so yummy? All right, so I'm gonna let these cool off for a little bit, mainly because we won't be able to ice it until they're completely cool. Y'all, I'm telling you, these cupcakes are so cute. You cannot go wrong with them. And I promise they will be a big hit at your 4th of July get together. Thank y'all so much for hanging out with me this week. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see y'all next time. Bye.